The investigation of a deadly hit and run in Minnesota is now getting national attention. This comes after we first told you about a controversial tactic seeking records that allow police to identify anybody who searched for information about the case using Google. Now, investigative reporter Eric Rasmussen is here with what has really become a growing debate. It is, and we've been following this for a while. The world's largest search engine once again finds itself in the middle of a fight over your privacy and public safety. And we found Supreme Court cases in other states could actually impact what happens here in Minnesota. Left for dead on the side of the road in Mille Lacs County last year, police are still looking for the hit and run driver who killed Dr. Kathy Donovan. Every time my cell phone goes off, it's is it the, somebody calling me to tell me the person's been arrested? As we first reported, investigators got a warrant telling Google to hand over information about anyone who used the search engine to look up basic details of the case for three days after Donovan was killed. You can imagine lots and lots of people you know, being curious about something that went on in their community and looking for that information and getting swept up in it. So far, that tactic has not led Minnesota authorities to a suspect. But in other cases, in other states, it has. Investigators call John Kurtz a serial rapist. Authorities in Pennsylvania first identified John Kurtz when they got a warrant for anyone who Googled the name and home address of a rape victim. As a result of this in investigation, we anticipate the potential for additional victims. But now the Pennsylvania Supreme Court is considering whether to throw out Kurtz's conviction. The key issue is whether so-called reverse warrants on specific keyword searches violate the Constitution, requiring police to first have probable cause. And in those cases, they were basically guessing. J.P. Nixon is a former officer, prosecutor, and now a law enforcement consultant on the East Coast. Probable cause generally requires something more exacting than a mere hunch or speculation. Nixon explains it like this. Imagine a murder in a 10-story apartment building with 10 units on every floor. That's 100 units. Now, no one can go in or out, so we know the killer is somewhere inside that building. A reverse warrant would allow police to search all 100 apartments looking for that one person. The chances of finding that gun and that shooter in any one of those units is 1%. 1% is not probable cause. Do you have a tough hill to climb here in convincing the public that this is something they should be caring about? Absolutely. Andrew Crocker is surveillance litigation director with the nonprofit Electronic Frontier Foundation. He acknowledges there won't be much sympathy for a convicted rapist in Pennsylvania, but he says the reverse warrant five investigates uncovered in Minnesota should concern everyone. Remember, police got the information of anyone who searched Google with keywords like Mille Lacs hit and run. This particular case stands out to me as, a, as one where there's going to be a lot of extraneous, un, uh, unproductive information produced by Google in response to one of these warrants, probably even more than many of the other ones we've seen. Those we spoke with wonder whether the Supreme Court of the United States may have the final word. I want those people caught. And as long as I think I can do it within the bounds of the law, I'm going to do that. What I'm telling you is I'm not necessarily convinced that the court's ultimately going to uphold these searches. Now, there was also an arson case that made it to Colorado's Supreme Court not long ago. It upheld the use of a reverse warrant there. But for now, that only applies to future cases, of course, in Colorado. Yeah. I mean, do we know how often police are using these kind of search warrants? You know, Lindsay, the problem is we don't. And that's actually been a source of frustration for advocates here in Minnesota. The Bureau of Criminal Apprehension says it uses reverse warrants, quote, infrequently. But I can also tell you there are now calls for Google to start providing better information about how often it's receiving these kinds of warrants or demands yeah, from police. That's a big question. Yeah, it'd be interesting to find out. Okay, Eric Grassman is on it. Thank you.